breaks a couple of tackles. Headline got to go! Headline got to go! He could! One week ago in the first round of the playoffs, the Oceanside Land Sharks faced off against the team from Lee County, the home of the legendary Lizard Man. <laughs> this week, the Wade Hampton Red Devils from none other than Hampton County, the part of South Carolina known now worldwide for the Murdoch murders and all the salacious details that surround that. And Chris Swisher, all of that's really interesting, but tonight we got a big football matchup coming up. Well, it's the rubber match. And are we doing the national anthem? We are, and after that, I'll talk about it. All right. All right, and we are back after that national anthem. So, Robert, I didn't know this until today, but in our first year of existence in 2016, the Land Sharks played Wade Hampton and lost 0 to 63. We were not a very good team that year. We were very this, brand new. By the way. And then in 2017, the following year, Land Sharks, the good guys, got up on top and beat the Red Devils 41 to 21. So, the series is tied at a robust one and one. This is the rubber match. And if we talk about how these teams have fared this year, the Red Devils come in at seven and four, and the Land Sharks are nine and one. Top ranked team in two way, the Oceanside Land Sharks. I tell you, this Wade Hampton team, the, you know, on paper, it looks, Land Sharks look pretty good, Robert, but I'll tell you this. Watching the Red Devils warm up, they were pretty spirited. They were pretty fired up. And listen, they don't have any other choice. They're coming into the big house here at the Citadel, taking on the number one team in 2A, the Oceanside Land Sharks. So. Well, Wade Hampton comes from that part of the state right down the road from Barnwell where there's a powerhouse in 2A. Wade Hampton, however, has never really had that degree of a football tradition at their school. Nonetheless, they're in the playoffs. Last week, they knocked off Pageland Central, which is a pretty darn good team. And uh, so they're coming and hoping they could pull the upset of the century, which it kind of would be. Yeah, they. Um, and let's talk about the from a scoring standpoint. The Sharks are, are scoring just a, a shade over 35 points per game, giving up less than 10 per game. And then for the Red Devils, they're scoring around 24 points a game. Um, and, uh, you know, they're so Barnwell's the team that's put it on the most. They scored 41. But I'll tell you, other than that, they've held teams to around three touchdowns per game. And so. You know, and we're on our fifth shutout from a defensive standpoint, so it'll be interesting to see what defenses show up best. So, listen, Chad, Coach Chad Wilkes, um, the young 30-year-old head new coach for the Lion Sharks, does nothing but win, and he's not fancy about it. He's an X's and O's guy, and he doesn't over-scheme. 
Um, he what it, whatever he sees on film and he puts together, it's all about showing up with focus, energy, and execution. So okay. tonight, if we do those three things, Robert, I think we'll be okay. As we see our captains walking down the sidelines towards the middle of the field, Timmy Castine, number 50, Ben Britton, number 54, the junior, Edward Reidenbach, our junior quarterback, and, of course, Monroe Freeling, number 78, the all-world left tackle for the Land Sharks, and it'll really come down to these guys playing like they have all season. You know, they're coached up. There's not a whole lot of fancy stuff, as you said. We uh, kind of predictable what we're going to do. But uh, we are also missing still one of our key players, and that, of course, would be number 24, Vaughn Blue. You got an update. Still out indefinitely. He, um, I can tell you this. I spoke to, to VB this week, and he is dying to get back out on the field. And I know there are, all of his teammates are hoping that he's – Ready to get back out as well, too. Waiting to see what the clearance is on uh, on the recovery, but I can tell you what, he's not missed a whole lot of days of working this, his lower half with his legs and working out. The kid is just a, he's a winner, and I know he wants to be a part of this run down the stretch. And I'll tell you who wants him to be out there the most is my kid, Tuck Swisher, because he's taking the pounding every night on the run, running the ball, but we haven't seen Vaughn and Tuck together as a one-two punch all year. If you think about it, Tuck was out with a broken leg, through the Sumter game, Vaughn breaks his thumb in the Sumter game, so they just kind of flip-flop rolls. So it'd be great to see the two senior running backs out there together for well, a final I know, couple games. I know you're going to be understandably modest for your boy, but Tucker really has more than capably filled in at that running ball, running back position, and he is kind of a bowling ball back there. When Tuck gets it, he's running all downhill, all power, all the way, and you better tackle him because otherwise he's not going to stop. Well, let's uh, thank you for that, Robert. But let's also give Rock, or, uh, Zach Hagan on some credit, too. When you want to go between the tackles up the gut, you give it to Tuck Swish. When you want to go to the stretch or get to the sidelines and let Zach Hagan on take it to the house, he's a threat to score every time he touches the ball. Another senior who's been hurt most of the season is Dylan Baker, who played a little bit of running back for us. He was one of our starting defensive ends, played a little bit of tight end as well, and I'm not sure if he's out for the entire season. I don't think he is. I talked to him also as well. Looks like the Land Sharks have won the toss. We are deferring. Ben Britton says, no, thank you. We'll take it in the second half. But Dylan Baker is, uh, man, we really miss him on the defensive side of the ball as well, too. Um, he is feeling much better. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him suited back up next week, Robert. Hezekiah Abram. Number one is one of the captains out there for Wade Hampton. They've got two of their big guys out there. One of them is number 62. Yeah, that can't be right. Must have misread that one because there is no 62 on our roster. 54, however, was out there for the Wade Hampton team, and that's Peyton Butler. He's going to be their senior, I'm sorry, their center tonight, and he's also a senior as well. So the smoke fills the air as the Landshark football team makes its way through the teeth of that big shark's head in the corner of the Citadel Football Stadium here in downtown Charleston. And that means it's time for some football. Robert, before we get going, any mythical creatures of Fame and notoriety from the Hampton Regional Park. Indeed, the scariest of all <laughs> those creatures all hail from a town on the outskirts of Hampton called Brunson, South Carolina. Oh, boy. Several generations of my family from there, including <laughs> my father. And so the creatures from Hampton County are here in one form or another here tonight. Estill is a part of Hampton County as well. They have two high schools, two public high schools there. And my alma mater is really five or ten miles down the road, Allendale Fairfax, and uh, they didn't put up much of a season this year. I saw where this Wade Hampton team blew them out. Well, I'm happy that Wade Hampton Red Devils are here tonight, playing on a Saturday night lights here at Johnson Haygood, downtown Charleston. 
Last night would have been a little blustery and wet, and I'll tell you what, I kind of like being on our home field anyway. It feels good to be back here, right? Yeah, we definitely could have played last night. I was scratching my head trying to figure out why we didn't have school yesterday, in person at least. I think they did it online. Irregardless, we're about to get this game underway. Is it Jake Rook out there going to do the kickoff? I'm not sure. Nope, we're going to go with number 16, Nate Sturm. So Nate did the kickoffs all the way through our last game, and a couple of them were kind of pooch kicks to uh, one of the middle guys towards the hash mark near us. But he also kicked some deeper, so he gives us some some possibilities, uh, not just kicking it out of the end zone, but being a little more targeted and where the ball is going to go. Well, he's a great soccer player, so he can really use his uh, foot skills to place the ball about wherever he wants to be uh, placing it. And I, I like the fact that we were able to do that uh, with number 16. Two men deep for Wade Hampton. Number three, Nigel Boston, and number 17, Jordan Rivers. As we put it up, and again, it is going to be short to that middle guy right at the 30-yard line on the left hash, and he goes down after picking up just a couple. But decent field position for Wade Hampton. They're wearing the white jerseys, red pants, red hats, wearing all black uniforms with the blue numbers and the black hats. One number change to keep an eye on for us tonight. Maxi Mormon is not wearing 20. He's wearing 23. We couldn't find the 20 jersey tonight in the pile. <laughs> so, All right, we'll have to remember that one. I see Jake Rook is out there at safety, so we know he's in good health. He moves up a little closer to the line as Wade Hampton is in a shotgun. They try a jet sweep to number four around the right side. Had a little bit of running room, but it closed up quickly just as he got to the line of scrimmage. That is Mike Mackay Davis on the carry. Robert, I've not watched a whole lot of film on this, this uh, Wade Hampton squad, so I'm kind of coming blind a little bit. I don't know what they do a lot of, but uh, I know they're athletic and fast. I'm not sure about their size being the biggest, though. Three wideouts right now and an H-back. It's a handoff to the single back. He doesn't get much. We bring him down after he picked up a yard or so. That's going to make it third down and kind of difficult for the uh, Wade Hampton football team. Their quarterback is number two, Chris Terry. He's gone pretty much all the way for Wade Hampton this season, and he's had a pretty good year. He's both a throwing and a running threat. Right here, we're going to see probably if he can throw it very well as they're looking at a third and a little over five. Put a man in motion, going to hand it. No, the quarterback kept it. And he's going to be real close to a first down. Looks like he's short, though. They marked the line of scrimmage for Hampton at the 42-yard line. So they're now looking at a fourth and two. And uh, decision time early for this team from Hampton, just about an hour and a half down the road. It looks like they're gonna go for it. And you know, they're big underdogs here. The ball is pretty close to midfield, why not? Quarterback under center for the first time tonight with a single back, hands it to him. He's hit at the line. They're not gonna get it, Swish. He was met by big old Timmy Castain, Ben Britton. Trey they're, Brown, yeah, too. Yeah, they're, they're pretty jacked right now. He gave it to him. What? Okay. That one's a mystery to me, frankly. But Wade Hampton's going to have it first and 10 on their own 43, and we're just going to have to suck it up and, and deal with that. Coach Chad Wilkes is not happy. He's, he's in the ear of the referee, not in a bad way, but just wanting an explanation. They didn't even didn't measure like that. It. No. Anyway, first and 10 for Wade Hampton, and it's a fake jet sweep. Quarterback throws it a little bit too high for his intended receiver. That'll make it second down and 10 yards to go. 82, the intended receiver for Wade Hampton. 
Elijah Gordon. I'm going to have to go back and look at that replay on that fourth down. That's a little. Yeah, that, that'll be spot, interesting. That'll be interesting to check it, take We're a look We're kind of far from the field, we'll admit, but it sure did look like a stop. Anyway, it's a handoff to that running back. He doesn't get much. He lost a yard, I think, on that one. That's going to make it third and more than ten. Good chain crew for us tonight. Buddy Bean, Bob Hamilton, Matt Stubbs, Rob Baldwin. Thanks, fellas, for moving the chains in the right direction tonight. Zion Dobson, number 22, is the workhorse at running back. For Wade Hampton, that was him on that last carry. They're going to go with four wideouts now as they spread it out. Quarterback slings it over to the right side, incomplete on the sideline over there. Now they're looking at a fourth and more than ten, and you can see their punting unit is trotting out onto the field. I hate that old adage, the ball don't lie. I'll tell you what, Robert, that, that fourth down spot might have cursed them on that series, that, uh, those, those three downs. So nobody's deep for us again, Swish. Same deal as last week. Zach Hagedon, the closest one, but he was pretty close up to the line. The ball will drift down to about the 16-yard line of Oceanside, and we'll start it inside our own 20. It'll be interesting to see how we try to come out. Are we going to try to establish the run? Are we going to go right to the pass? I think from what I've heard, these guys like to put five down on the line. They clog the, the, the box up, and they try to force you to beat you with the pass. I know they give the flats and the sides, the, you know, the quick games should be there, but let's see what old coach Chad Wilkes has got up his uh, sleeve tonight. Our offensive line out there now. We've got Finn Johnson back, number 63. He's in a guard spot. Eddie Portellis, our center. Our quarterback is Edward Reidenbach, and Tuck Swish is back there with him, but a flag goes down, and I think we're going to have a delay, of game. delay game, which is just frustrating on a change of possession. I don't know how that happens. So now we got it first and 10 as we have a little bit of a change of personnel. Trey Brown comes out, and he's replaced Max Moran. By the new number 23, Max Mormon, who's been playing a little bit more on offense the last few games, Swish. I think they like something that they see in Maxie. So Edward now with two wide outs and two tight ends. Hands it off to Tuck. Tuck picks up about seven or eight yards. We'll have it second down and seven on the 20-yard line. Hey, if we can continue to do that all night long, just grind the ball, grind the clock, grind the, the grass there. Three wide outs right as Edward takes the snap, gives it to Tuck again. Tuck Swisher moves the pile up to the 25, very close to the 25-yard line. Now we're going to have a third and about four. So Sharks trying to establish the running game early in the first quarter here. We just passed the eight-minute mark. So Zach Hagan on in now at running back. Expect to see him go wide stretch or try to hit the sidelines. Trey Brown goes in motion right to left, stops at the wing spot over there. Zach Hagedon takes the handoff, has plenty of room. Hagedon across the 40 in the 50. He's got one man to beat, tries to get around him, but then finally caught behind by number one. No flags on the play, and the Sharks and Zach Hagedon have it all the way up to the 30-yard line. It's a great one-two punch, isn't it, Robert? Go up the gut, up the gut, up the gut, and then you break Zach Hagedon, not Hagedin, Hagedon. That's what I said, isn't it? Yeah, I'm making a, a point of reference that oh. the uh, his <laughs> Edward dad. Edward keeps it. He runs it across the 15 down to about the 13-yard line, and let's continue our discussion on how to pronounce Hegedon. His dad wants it to uh, pronounce Hegedon, not Hegedin, on the highlight reels on the local news stations. Gotcha. Edward claps, gives it to Tuck. He has a man to beat over there on the left side, picks up about five all the way down to the 10-yard line. We're playing hurry-up football now as we're inside the red zone trying to keep these red britches off guard. <laughs> you, Allen Dale, hometown guy. <laughs> 
Tuck takes it. I thought Tuck had it, but Edward kept it, and he's down for a first down, I think. But you never know with these guys. It's inside the five at about the four-yard line. And sure enough, okay, they, <laughs> they finally gave him a first down there. And it's going to be first and goal on the four-yard line as Wade Hampton struggling a bit on their first effort at stopping this offense of Oceanside in all black today. Edward riding back in the end zone. Touchdown, Land Sharks. What I love about that, Robert, it was go, 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 go. And we haven't even put the ball in the air yet. That spells big trouble for Wade Hampton if that's what they're going to see all night from the Sharks. Pedal to the metal. Especially when we got down there close to their end zone and that hole that Edward Rodenbach had on the left side of our offensive line was something Moses would have been proud to see. Doink! When he was trying to cross the Red Sea. And that extra point attempt is no good. As Chris so aptly put it, with a doink. So six to zero. And Wade Hampton is going to come back out there and see if they can move the ball a little bit. We're going to take a five-second break. Robert, pretty impressive drive, right? The uh, my old, our old buddy Matt Bartlett up in Chicago watching tonight thinks the same as well, too. I tell you, it's Tuck Swisher, it's Zach Hagedon, it's Edward Reidenbach all beating you with their legs right now. That's a tough triple threat to try to beat and, and stop all night, Robert. Nigel Solomon is back there with Zion Dobson, and it's going to be another short kick to the 35. The carrier has it up to about the 35-yard line, and Wade Hampton again going to start with pretty good field position. I'm not sure what we're doing with this kickoff. Bang it deep into the blue. I'm sure that there's a very good reason that I just don't know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Well, you and I have been wrong probably more than we've been right when we start posturing and guessing on what uh, old Coach Chad Wilkes is up to, but he's always got a reason for what he's doing. Yeah, I'll start second-guessing him when he loses a couple more games. <laughs> Hand off to the running back, Dobson. He gets back to the line, and he's hugged by some guys wearing black uniforms and brought down to the ground. I'll tell you, let me come back to the offensive series again real quick. Really good to see us up and going fast and establishing some dominance early. We've come out of the gates a little sluggish the last few games in the first half, so I really like the up-tempo that Coach Wilkes has got our team going here. Now, let's flip the script. Coach Dave Salazzo and Jay Mack, the, the co-defensive coordinators, let's see what they've got in store to shut these guys down. Let's see if we can get a three and out here. So it's a second down and about nine yards to go now for Wade Hampton. Chris Terry, the quarterback, keeps it going around the right side. It was a pretty good fake. He's hit and pushed out of bounds over there, though. Flag goes up late. That makes you feel like it's probably going to be a late hit of some sort. They marked him out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And we're taking a look to see what the White Hat's going to tell us here. Come on. Personal foul. Yeah, I think it must have been a late hit out of bounds. They were calling over there. You worry whenever there's a tackle right on the sideline. But that's going to be 15 costly yards for the Land Shark and a first down for the Red Devils as they cross over into Oceanside Land Shark territory, first and 10 on our 42. Chris Terry, the quarterback, now on the shotgun, has four wideouts. He faked the handoff. Under pressure, rolls out to the left side, slings it down, had a receiver near the 30, but it would have to be a really good pass. And number 18 was unable to bring that in, Joshua Goodman. Old number, what is that quarterback, two or seven? Number seven, he took a little bit of a lick there at the end. He was number holding two. his hands up, wanting to get some kind of a call, but that wasn't going to happen. It was a clean hit. 
It was just a good, hard football hit. So now he's got a second down and 10. And we're at about the 526 mark. Actually, we are at the 526 mark. Three wideouts this time as Chris Terry throws it over to his right flat, complete, picked up about five. The receiver brought down right away. But that's one of the better gainers of the day. That was his running back, Zion Dobson, number 22 on that reception. There's water dripping all around here. I can't figure it out. It's not rain. It hasn't been raining today. Maybe hope somebody upstairs is leaking. Hope we're not under a restroom. As Terry, the quarterback, has a flag thrown before he can do anything. That was well before the snap, and it's going to be a false start on the offense. A little gift for the Land Sharks there at the 449 mark. Sharks up in this one, 6-0, to zero, first quarter. Oceanside ranked number one in all of 2A football. One of the favorites to march all the way to the state championship, but this team from Hampton has come here fired up and ready to play. They have one of the best crowds we've seen all year from a visiting team across the way as Chris Terry, their quarterback, plays a little option. They got a, they're two in kind of an RPO. He kept that one though and was brought down by Trey Brown, I think number four. Yeah, that's Trey playing at the linebacker spot. We also have Jace Kraftchik out there at linebacker. We're rotating guys in and out. Maxi Mormon Put some as well. Back. Come on, Fourth Zach. down now. They're going for it. No, they're going to punt. And he puts this one pretty high up catch there. It, catch it, catch it. Zach Hagedon by himself around the 10-yard line. Let it go, and the ball stopped about there. So we'll have it first and 10 on our own 11-yard line, and let's see if we can drive that ball 89 yards. Our last drive consisted of all running plays, mostly number 22 just banging away on that interior line. And then when we had a big, a big third down and long, we put in number three and Zach Hagedon lit the rocket fuel and ran it a long way down the field, and then we went Quick, 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 and then we're in the end zone before you knew it. Got nine seconds on the clock here, boys. Let's get it out. Yeah, let's not get another delay call on a change of possession. Tuck, Tuck Swisher has it. Tucker has the first down. Rumbles up to the 24-yard line. Give Swisher 13 yards on that carry. Deuce, deuce. So good to see Tucker out there after he was hurt before the season even started. He takes this one on the left side and pushes three guys back two or three extra yards after he got hit. That'll put the line of scrimmage on the 31-yard line as we're going no huddle. And in comes Zach Hagedon. Let's see what old Zach number three can do. Oh, we're going to go empty here. Empty backfield, five wide outs, four of them, three of them on the right side. Edwards looking that way. Zach Hagedon on the catch. Hagedon up to the 45. They try to get him, but Zach's still going. Now he's showing some power inside the 40. Gets it all the way down to the 38-yard line. Got a boy, Zach. Look at this hurry up. We're going to do it again. They can't get guys in and out on a defensive switch. Love what we're doing here. Again, we got four wide outs, but Tucker in the backfield takes the handoff, Ooh. tries to dice his way through, but nothing, nothing doing there. Really doesn't get, get anything. 2.46, clock moving here at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Thank you for joining us on your Saturday night. We had to move this game because of a hurricane that was kind of a non-event. Dud. Edward takes the snap, gives it to Tucker. Tucker up to the 45, and they stop him there. And blow the whistle here, guys. I mean, if they're going to talk about a late hit out of bounds over there, let's.
So now we're looking at a third down and let's call it six yards to go. Last time we had a play of this nature, it was a handoff to number three. And he's out there right now along with four wide outs, no tight end. Edward Reinbach, our quarterback, also a running threat. As Zach goes over to the slot on the left side, Edward looking over there, has a wide receiver complete across the 25 and down inside the 20-yard line. Jace Crafter. Jace, the senior, on the catch, Mr. Clutch. They're not even set. Go, snap it. Flag goes up before... Anyway, Zach Hagedon goes around the right side into the end zone. Curious, though, about that flag. It's against us. Probably we weren't all set. I don't think it's holding because it was before the play ever got underway. Tucker now trotting back out there. It is unusually quiet here tonight. It is. It's eerie. It's creepy. False start on the offense, and that was declined, but then there was also another bigger penalty that I'm not sure what that was. Guess as good as mine. At any rate, it cost us 10 yards, and it's going to be first and 20 We're for going Edward Reinbach. I think we're going too fast for the, for the officials. We got our receivers bunched up over on the left side. One guy all alone over here on the right. Then we put Trey in motion, and he gets to the wing spot on the right side. Edward gives it to Tucker after all that jumping around, and Tucker goes nowhere, lost a yard. So this drive not going quite as smoothly as that last one. Time to air it out here, Robert. On that right side of our offensive line, we got two guys who play both ways. As Edward takes this snap, looks over to his right, wants to throw it to the end zone to Cole Strickler, and that ball goes out of bounds. Whenever I don't know who the receiver is now, I'm going to say it's Cole Strickler. You would have been right on that one. <laughs> Today, he's a little easier to recognize. He's got those high black socks on and that's very distinguishing so that helps me out a lot Edward Reinbach also kind of in a cool this he's going with the right side all black stockings as we're looking at a third down and 20 with 50 seconds to go fake handoff play action Edward around the left side is going to keep it Reinbach down to the 25 to 20. Edward trying to get a first down. Flag comes in as he's tackled over there. That could be associated with the tackle or it could be a bad block. We'll have to wait and see. At any rate, the referee says he got down to the 12 yard line, which would make us two yards shy of a first. These referees, uh, this is not a criticism, it's an observation. They move kind of slowly. I think that's part of the quiet. eerie quietness because everybody's just quiet waiting on them. And looks like we're going to go the wrong direction here, Robert. The legal block in the back is what they called on that one, so that's what it will be. And now we've got third down at 15. Doesn't matter what we think, Robert. We're down inside the last minute of the first quarter of this second playoff game. Trey Brown running out on the field, taking the place of Maxie Mormon. Trey's going to be over on the left side. We've got to go with four wideouts. Zach Hagedon, number three, now in at the running back spot. He goes over to the right side. And Edwards looking that way downfield to Zach Hagedon. Touchdown, Zach Hagedon. <laughs> Hagedon, Hagedon, he's not a Hagedon't. <laughs> that one's for all of you local news broadcasters who have the privilege of calling his name every week because he's having such a great season. I tell you, just the fact that another observation about Coach Wilkes, the guy just figures out how to make the best of what he's got with his personnel. 
Looks like we're going to go for two here instead of the kick. Edward takes the snap and the shotgun hits a keeper. Looked to me like he got it. The referees tend to agree. So now we make up for that mix, missed PAT on the first touchdown to make your score a normal looking 14 to zero. And we're gonna take a five second pause here. Okay, we are back. Robert, I like that two-score first quarter. Um, it feels good. Now what I don't, uh, what I'd like to see is, uh, again, great defensive pressure and just keep that, that pedal to the metal. I like that hurry-up offense. It really has got the Red Devils back on their heels. Wade Hampton High School actually located Closer to, if not in Varnville. Varnville with a V. Nate Sturm puts this one up. He's going to try and kick it deep. It's down to the 10 yard line where the receiver for Hampton gets it up to the 30 yard line. You know, whether, whether we kick it deep or pooch that, it starts at about the same spot anyway. Robert, so maybe there's a bit of a strategy there not to give up the big kickoff return like we saw up at Timberland. That could be it. Could be. Nate Sturm, at any rate, I think stays out on the field. That's him on the left corner spot, I think. Yeah, he's a good little DB for us. Uh, very aggressive, great hands, great ball read. Tez Spahn in the right corner spot. I see A.J. Zarzaka. Out there, he's going to go into coverage on this play as the quarterback and the shotgun's looking downfield with four wideouts. And it's a quick throw over to the right side, but the referees delay of game before they could even snap it. So I guess it's a 25 second clock when they come out of that. You got to be you got to be hustling to get that thing off because we've been called on it once. And as now the Red Devils have also. Look at the clock, Swish. It says 10. I don't know what's going on with the clock. Maybe that means it's 10 seconds, but it doesn't look normal to me. Quarterback Terry hands it off to a guy going around the right side, and he looked like he was using a walker. He was going so slow. Looked looked weird because it's not a 10.0. It's now zero, and it's the quarter is over, and it's just... Yeah, it's just it looks weird. And, right? the, and even the teams are like kind of standing around like, mm, what's going on? <laughs> At any rate, the first quarter is over now, and we're going to take a five-second pause, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. With no stats tonight, unfortunately. Our, our stats guy, Bill... Is out. He, I tell you, maybe he started eating again, and now he's he's taking big siestas. <laughs> I was on a 14-day fast pilgrimage. pilgrimage. We'll say this old coach Kempensky is up spinning some music for us tonight. Got a couple of old dudes like us bouncing around a little bit tonight, Robert. Yeah, I'm digging it. This is uh, this is the what is this song? I know it. I just can't call uh, it. I'm, uh, I am outdated, this irrelevant, is, and crusty. So This is the I song Beamer dances to when he puts his sunglasses on. That's, how, that's the only way I know it. People are laughing at me because this is like, you know, a if classic it's a, Beatles hit to people of a younger generation. If it's a song that I know, then it probably shouldn't be played here uh, <laughs> during a football game. The, the young people like all this uh, crazy, crazy good music, is, I guess. I don't know. So we can see a little bit better now. They're down under our eyeballs here on this side of the field, Robert. And I'm always thankful for having a better view of the game. As Wade Hampton comes out. 
they look good. You know, it's, it's, we've played some teams that just did not look good at all out there, and Wade Hampton is not one of those. As their quarterback takes it, looks over to his left side. Oh, it should have been completed. I mean, but that, that's the difference right there. You know, number four should have had that one, no question. That's Makai Davis. They look really well put together. I think they're well coached. They're organized. Got a bunch of spirit to them. They just haven't executed well early. That ball thrown a little behind the receiver, still hit him in the hands. You always like to say if he can touch it, he should catch it, but that was a little tough. Got the old third down Jaws music going here in the stadium. Can probably anticipate a big pass here. It's a third and 20 for Wade Hampton. As the Sharks hustle into their positions. Oh, reverse. Oh, it's a foul. Oh, it's a oh, oh. Go, Timmy, go. Go, yeah. yeah. So you probably figured it out, but Timmy Castine. Picked up the fumbled handoff, and boy, rumble is about the only verb I can think of that would fit what he did into the end zone there. I know this one's jump around, Robert. Uh, he's doing a little dance Man, on the sideline. Has line. Timmy ever had a, a touchdown in his whole career here? I'd be surprised if he hasn't, because Timmy's done just about everything that can be done, playing both ways, offense and defense, and it's just a pleasure to see him get to have that celebration now. I know he racked up a ton in youth football on those Mount Pleasant Rec League fields, but boy, oh boy, what a great, great play for our senior nose guard and just spirit of the team, Timmy Castine. We're going to go for two again. Edward doing the same thing, just looking for a place to run it easily into the end zone over there behind Monroe Freeling on the left side, and we'll take – Five seconds with your score, 22 to zero. Timmy's wearing some kind of big necklace over here on the sideline, you see him? That's gotta be the turnover trophy. That is. There he is. It's a big ocean side uh, emblem that they hang around the neck, as you can see there on the camera. Timmy hadn't had a haircut in a while either. As Coach Zalazo's giving him a congratulations and say, it's, don't get your head too big, boy. We got a long way to go here. Well, I'll tell you, I've been down here since noon, Robert, and the old Citadel Bulldogs put it to the Virginia University of Lynchburg, 66 to zero. So this field was warmed up for the old land sharks. No. So Ryan Glover. looks like we're uh, getting ready to kick it off again. And it's always a mystery to see what we're going to do with it on the kickoff. It's Quinn Mahoney now. I was about to say that's a different kicker. So Quinn most likely going to kick it deep. Jake Rook did a lot of the kicking earlier in the season as A.J. Johnson's a little bit late getting out there onto the field. One second to go. It's an onside kick. Quinn kicked it, and Quinn recovered it. He's going to – no, he's going to call it short of the 10-yard line. Yeah, I mean, if he recovered it on the 49, it didn't go 10 yards. If, if, as I think, Wade Hampton's going to have this when they'll have good field position once again, their best of the night on a kickoff, but the referees are having a conversation at least. So it's going to be Wade Hampton's ball. Didn't go 10 yards. No instant replay up here in the booth. No red flags to be thrown on the sideline. I like the aggressiveness. Big fan of the onside kick. Wade Hampton trailing here, 22 to zero. Has it right at midfield. Chris Terry, the quarterback, gives uh -oh. it to number 22. He picked up about 10 yards, and their workhorse, Zion Dobson, looked really good on that carry, in which he picked up eight. 
Second down now and two for Wade Hampton. As they're in Oceanside, land shark territory. I'll tell you what, at some point here, you're going to expect Wade Hampton to start throwing some, some fists and haymakers, not literally, but, or physically, but more literally. They're down 22 to zero. They got to make something happen here pretty quickly. They're going to go with three wide outs to the left side. Hand off to Dobson, number 22. He got the first down. And he's still moving. He's moving that pile, Chris. They haven't blown the whistle yet. What in the world? I don't think I've ever seen a running back move a pile 10 yards, but that's what he did. All the way down to inside the 31-yard line of Oceanside. And it's a timeout, Oceanside now. Boy, Salazzo and Wilkes are not happy. Holy cow. It's inconceivable that number 22, although a good running back, he's not a huge guy, could move our entire defense 10 yards. I don't know what was happening there. Somebody needs to take out the tires, take the wheels out. Like I'm saying, like, so, Robert, what I'm trying to say here is they're down 22 to zero. They're not going to roll over and lay down. Now they're going to start throwing some fists. They're going to fight. They're going to, and this is what we're seeing. 22 is running like he's a little ticked off right now. And I'll tell you, he's more ticked off is Salazzo and Wilkes. We may need to check those coaches' headsets here in a little bit when, uh, when the game's over. But, man, they probably pushed that pile a good 7, 8, 10 yards, did they not? Indeed, they did. Our two defensive coordinators out there, Coach Justin McIntyre and Coach Salazzo. And now our defensive unit is ready to go. It's A.J. Zarzaka. Comes out there, Jake Rook, Trey Brown. There's a very large man who may be number 78 on that defensive line, or if it's not, it's 77. Carson Lee, I think that's who it is, who hadn't been out there before. He's at the left, left end spot. As Oceanside has it, first and 10 on the 31. Chris Terry hands it off to Dobson. He thinks he can go outside oh. with it. And he had some success until the safety came in there, Zach Hagedon, number three, and hit him hard. Now he's going off, the, off for, uh, where is he still in? I'm not sure if he went he, off or he not. He is, no. He, um, he's, he's still gonna, out there. He's going to feel those hits. We're, we're teeing up on him. He's averaging almost 100 yards a game this season, over 90. As they're looking at a second down and six, 10-24, clock moving. Quarterback Terry hands it to Dobson. He goes forward up to the 25-yard line. Got about three on that one, but now they've got a third down, and let's call it four. Well, there's another pile moving, just going the wrong or the uh, the opposite way on that one. Got a man down as he he's on the bottom of that pile. That's Dobson, number 22. He doesn't look like a like a sizably big running back, but he certainly is tough. That's Dobson with a B. Big third down here, Roberto. He's a junior, and you're right, it is a big one. Third and four, about nine and a half to go here in the first half. Terry, the quarterback, looking over to the sideline, talking to his running back, and the whistles blow. It may be a delay of game. Timeout. Instead, timeout as the Red Devils saw that delay penalty coming and decided to take a minute. Nine and a half exactly to go here, first half. Oceanside scored all three of our touchdowns in the first half of this game. Edward Reidenbach had two of them. Zach Hagedon had one. Zach Hagedon has had a huge game for us thus far both sides of the ball, but most notably on offense. Let's not forget old TC, Timmy Castine's big fumble pickup, rumble bumble into the That's right. How did I zone. I just added a, another score. I think I'm I'm giving Edward credit for touchdowns when they were really extra points. And you're right, Timmy Castine had a defensive score at our last touchdown. Back to our big third down here. Third and four, one running back. 
Terry hands it to him. Dodson, not Dobson, number 20, gets the first down all the way down to the 20-yard line. And Chris, in their first couple of drives, Wade Hampton really wasn't able to move it at all. But on this one, they're having success. It's all on the shoulders of number 22 right now. So if it's working, keep feeding it to him. But I tell you, if they don't have anyone else that can run the ball, he's going to tire out here. Wow, look at the moon across the way. We'll have that for you in a second. But right now, it's a first and 10 on the 20, and Wade Hampton gives it to Dobson again. This time, we sling him down before he can go anywhere. And there you see that moon. Wow. There was an eclipse just a couple days ago, but it was before my alarm clock goes off at like 5 a.m., I think. So I missed it. Well, Robert, here's what I want. <coughs> Excuse me. The defense to look out for is it's been 22, 22, 22, 22. Watch the fake to him and then uh, throw a pass here. He's got to be struggling with some tired legs. Terry fakes it to him, sure enough, throws it over to the right flat. It's caught the receivers down inside the 10 or close to it. And that's going to be right at the first down marker. They're going to give it to him. Number 82, Elijah Gordon was the receiver on that play. And you're right, first and goal now for the Red Devils who are threatening us. And how many quarters have we had a shutout in a row now? A lot. Quite a few. We've got five shutout total game shutouts. Let's see if we can preserve it here. With that running game, well, the quarterback throws it to the corner of the end zone. They fight for it. Number one is fighting it. Does Pick. he have it? Touchdown. I don't know. The referee's hands went up, but then he brought him right back down real fast as if he was trying to erase it. And I couldn't tell who caught that one, if anybody. The referee's down in the corner of the end zone, and they're having a conversation. The linesman over there, the farthest way across the field, is the one who, who put his hands up and then brought him right back down. And now he's going to say it was a touchdown. The receiver, number one, Hezekiah Abram, I think was being covered by Zach Hagedon back yep. there. Well, Zach came up off the ground with the ball, but I don't know if there was possession enough to be called that's one where you really want to see the replay. <laughs> but we're not well, Chad, gonna... Chad Wilkes wants an explanation because he deserves one here. And he's all the way out there about as far as he could reasonably go onto the field, and he's talking to the White Hat. So uh, we'll let uh, the referees have a talk with our head coach. We're getting word up here, I think, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but that our quarterback might have a little injury. Let's hope not. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like he just has a pretty good gash in his left arm. Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of it. That looks yeah, I pretty bad. I don't pretty, know how that happens. Pretty bad. I don't know how that happens either. I see Edward, though, over here on the sideline. He looks okay. I don't think a cut is going to stop. Mr. Reidenbach, unless it removes one of his extremities, and maybe only if it's a leg. So Wade Hampton, points on the board, now going to attempt a PAT after the referees explained to Chad Wilkes the basis for their ruling of a touchdown. This is up and in, so 22 to seven year score. And we're going to take five seconds. Well, that offensive drive for Wade Hampton looked like our first three drives, Robert, where we were just pounding, pounding, pounding. And uh, I don't want to say we were on our heels, but I tell you, 22 just put it on his shoulders and drove the ball downfield. And they were having pretty good <clears throat> success. And then there was that one play where number 22 would not be denied. And he moved our entire defense seemingly 10 yards downfield. And after that, you just had a feeling that these 
Red Devils were going to put it into the end zone. And, of course, when you have success running it, the play action can, can help you out on your throwing game. And it was a pass for that touchdown over towards the flag in the end zone. Our guys aren't set up real deep. Wade Hampton kickoff is kind of short. Zach Hagedon has it at the 25, crosses the 30, 35, 40. Hagedon running through a crowd. They stop him at the 45-yard line, and that's where the Land Sharks will have it first and 10. Let's see what kind of uh, ball we come out with. If we got a little attitude here, Robert, um, you may get a sense that our sideline might be a little bit fired up. They don't like getting scored on. We only average giving up 9.3 points per game. Zach wearing those red gloves today. Makes him easy to identify. As he was having a good sportsmanlike conversation with the guy who tackled him as he walked off the field. 7.36 to go here in the second quarter. Johnson Haygood, the home field for the Land Sharks. Tuck Swisher in the backfield. Quick pass over to the left side to the slot. Bryce Bennett. Good to see him back out there. He only picked up about a yard, though. Bryce missed our last game. I think he was just a little under the weather for that one. The senior. As you see, Maxie Mormon coming out there to play the H-back spot. Tucker still going to be the running back. Bryce goes way out wide to the right. Jace Kraftchik over here on the left. And that's who the quarterback was looking at, I think. Nope. He completed it all the way. That's Maxie Mormon. And they say they pushed him out of bounds at the 41. And if he hadn't been out of bounds, he might have gone all the way, Swish. I tell you, we love Maxie on defense, but we might be missing a great offensive weapon, something that they're seeing in practice, putting in a couple of plays that's going to feature Max in his hands. Love to see it. That was a good one there as Trey Brown's now in there at the wing position. Tucker running behind some big offensive linemen over on the right side. Picks up three or four yards. That'll make it second down, six. I'd like to see Tuck trust himself and just try to bounce a little bit more outside instead of making that cut forward. He had more room on the outside, but he's just so conditioned to run north and south that he's going to go to contact before he goes to extra green. He's replaced now by Zach. As we're looking at a second and six, Edward out there, notwithstanding a cut arm, gives it to Zach Hagedon. He has the first down across the 30 up to the 31-yard line. i tell you, Wade Hampton's going to be saying, dag on, 22, number three, number one. <laughs> and they're missing their best running back. Number 24, Vaughn Blue. Hate to see Vaughn missing so much of his senior year. But we're really hopeful he'll be back before the end of these playoffs as Edward takes it, wants to throw it quickly over to the right side, over the head of the intended receiver, Cole Strickler. <laughs> I got it. boy. We just under six minutes to go now. As Maxie Mormon comes back out there, Trey Brown getting a rest. The other thing about this swish is Trey Brown plays both ways. And this giving him a little bit of rest on offense could inure to our benefit, particularly as we move into the latter stages of the game. Hey, you know who uh, Max V. Mormon reminds me of? Me. Well, similar. <laughs> Dana. Ah, there Looks you go. Like... Handoff. No, Edward dropped it. He faked the handoff, dropped it right at his feet, but fortunately, very quickly, cat-like, jumped down and grabbed the ball. And we're going to be looking at a third down and 15 after that botched play. I think Dana's a little bigger than, than Maxie, but I could be wrong. As Tucker comes out now to the running back spot, he's to the left of the quarterback, but a whistle blows, timeout, Wade Hampton. Talking about alumni of the Land Sharks. One of them is Rhett Powell, who's playing for Mount Union now in college. And I don't know if you guys saw it, but they had an amazing play on the end of the game today. It's all over Twitter, where 
the long pass from the quarterback hit a player's helmet, bounced up into the air and into the hands of a receiver at the one yard line, and he just ran it into the end zone for the win. So very excited for Brian Powell and Margaret and Rhett and all the pals in Mount Union. Will Gauz was also playing today. In the snow. Yes, he was. Got a picture from Gabby, his mom. Might be the first time that kid's played in the snow. Third down and 15, 525 to go, second quarter. Edward takes it, rolls it over to his left side. He's hit as he throws it. He had a receiver. He put he was he caught it. Jace Kraftchick, what great control over his feet to keep that ball in bounds. What a phenomenal catch. Had the presence of mind where the sideline was. Got one foot down. He got it was professional. He got both feet down. He just I, needed one. That was an NFL touchdown, I do believe as Edward now is rushing us up to the line. That's what we do when we get in the red zone. Tucker takes the handoff. Tucker down to the 10, close to the first down, but not quite enough. It'll be second down and about one to go. Quick, 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 quick. Here we go, boys. And quickly we do. Tucker still in there with Edward. Oh, oh my geez. goodness gracious. Tucker is hit really hard by number 15 from Wade Hampton. Oof. Mandriel Sanders. God, I could hear it from up here. The outside linebacker came blitzing in there. And, man, Tuck had nowhere to go. That's the first time we've called his name tonight. Zach Hagedon with his red gloves is in there now. Trey Brown goes into motion. Zach takes the handoff, tries to get around the left side. Hagedon, touchdown, touchdown, Land Sharks. Haga who? Hagedon! <laughs> Got to get a little drink of water after saying that word. Hagen Hall. I got corrected, I'm pretty sure, by his grandmother or a grandparent last season because I was mispronouncing his name. The Hagedons are proud about how their name is pronounced, as well they should be. And we're going for two as Edward takes the snap. Same play again, and he spins around after being in the grasp of somebody but gets into the end zone. Yeah, it was Devin Yard, sir. Devin Yard on that carry. All right, thank you, guys. I would have never caught that. And we're going to take five seconds here. We'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Robert, the big question for me, I'm going to make it for you as well, is how do we respond after that touchdown? We don't like giving up touchdowns. We gave one up. Uh, it was a pretty uh, intentional drive, I would call it, on their behalf with number 22. Let's see if they come back out and do the same kind of a thing here. But you've got four and a half minutes left before the halftime, down 23 points. Let's kind of see what happens. And don't, rem or don't forget, we had that onside kick that gave him the ball at half, half field, right? So this one's deeper. I like it. I think this is Quinn Mahoney again. It's bobbled by the receiver, number three. He's going to struggle to get it past the 10-yard, falls over to the 11, and uh, as good as their field position was on their last drive, Wade Hampton's pretty deep in their own territory this time after Nigel Solomon struggled a little bit. That makes us feel a little better, doesn't it? Yeah, the field position definitely helps. <clears throat> and if our defense isn't up to the task, it won't be because they were struggling to hear what Coach Salazzo was saying on the sidelines. He was loud and clear. I want to say hello to his son, Christopher, who's always watching him from up north. Good to have him watching in. Quarterback hands it off to that number 22. He's trying to get to the edge, but can't. 
We dive and push him out of bounds at the 12 and a half yard line. I think Jay's Kraftchik was involved in that one. Maybe JJ Zarzaka as well. Number 33. So that's going to put the Red Devils deeper in Hades with a second down and about 14 as they're deep in our territory. They're going to have three wideouts this time, and it's a handoff to Dobson, number 20. He gets up to the 10, but that ain't going to help much. And when you're this deep in your territory and when you're not getting positive yards on your first play, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so they're uh, third in uh, double here. So you always look for the screen, kind of screen pass here kind of a thing. Um, they, they, I don't think Wade Hampton throws the ball a ton. They've not been very effective at it, at least in this first half of the game, but you don't want to discount that. Well, they did have a touchdown on the last drive through the air. One of their guys, I thought, moved early. Quarterback throws it over to the left side. The tight end has it, and big yardage for Wade Hampton all the way up to the 39, just as if to prove Swish wrong. Well, I called it. I said, you got to watch out for the quick screen, here, and that's what they did. So. <laughs> Indeed, you did. Elijah Gordon, I think, on that carry would be number 82. And all of a sudden, Wade Hampton is out of treacherous territory and all the way up on their 40-yard line, and Chris Terry has his team moving. He gives this no, it was a fake. Quick pass over to his receiver on the left side doing a crossing route, has enough for a first down. I think someone from Wade Hampton's listening, and they called the coaches and said, throw the ball. Hezekiah Abram, number one, whose name we've called a few times tonight on that catch. Now it's first and ten for him, and they're in our territory on the 49 of the Sharks. 2.20 to go on the clock, three wide outs for Terry. Hands it to Dobson, going on the right side. He's... Pulled down by a group of gentlemen wearing black uniforms after he gains a couple of yards as that moon moves up over there across the field. And honestly, it's kind of hard to watch the game. That moon is so beautiful over there. But not really. We're inside two minutes to go, first half. Sharks are leading this one 30-7. to seven. The quarterback, Terry, is going to keep this one after he faked the handoff. He picked up three or four, but now the Red Devils have a third down, and let's call it four, maybe five yards. That quarterback looks pretty sneaky quick. Um, uh, much like Edward, for us, pulls the ball and guts it right down the middle of the, of the field. I, we better watch out for that kid. He's pretty sharp. Well, how about this, Wish? He's a sophomore. Ew. And he's back up to the line, hands it to Dobson, his buddy number 22, who has the first down. Dobson. Pushing people back all the way down to the 37. And yet again, Wade Hampton looking pretty strong on this drive. I think there's a timeout on the field. Player down. All right, there's an injury timeout. So the Sharks will come over and talk as the trainers work with the Wade Hampton player who we can't identify right now. I can hear Salazzo yelling for water up here. <laughs> we probably haven't given enough props to our cheerleaders this year. I mean, we have a huge cheerleading core over there. Of course, right now they're just on a knee because of the injured player. But uh, they do a great job for the Land Sharks. And there's a, there's a lot of them. And I can remember, you know, just a few years ago that we couldn't quite say that. Everything about Oceanside is maturing and getting better year after year. I think we won a state championship or two this past week. Volleyball, I know we had a cross country runner. Do we have some tennis as well? Girls tennis. We're not just a football school, in fact. We haven't won a state championship yet in football. We got quite a few other ones though in other sports. I think our baseball team had six D1 
unbelievable. I mean, they, they had guys signed by Louisville and Clemson, and, uh, Georgia Coastal Tech, Carolina, Hope, Georgia Tech. Carl, yeah. Oof, and they won the state championship handily last year. And this year it's pretty much the same guys. They pull the player up. That's their running back. And that is Dobson, number 22, and you hope he's going to be okay. Yeah, you, you want to see him in this game. He makes the game so much better when he's in it. He's a junior, <clears throat> and he looks like he's all right. Maybe he just got the wind knocked out of him, just needed to, to rebase, but uh, glad to see him bounce back up. So let's reorient you with 1.16 to go first half. Wade Hampton is driving it. They've got it on in our territory at about the 38. Terry drops back, tunnel screen. Number one, bounces out. Oh my gosh, he's gonna go all the way into the end zone. Hezekiah Abram caught that screen in the middle of the field, didn't follow his blockers, instead sprang to the outside over on the left side and he was gone. And all of a sudden, Wade Hampton looks like a different football team, but they're in a pretty deep hole on the scoreboard. I got a feeling we may have a little discussion about tackling. In the well, I, I'm not room sure that he was hit by anybody in the middle of the field. You would have thought because he was in the middle of our defense, but at any rate, a bell rings, and Wade Hampton. Puts it up and in. Missed nope, it. Nope, he missed it. So it's going to be 30 to 13, your score, with a minute of one to go, and we're going to take a five-second break. I'm wondering if that bell ring was to signify the touchdown or the impending missed PAT. I don't know what that bell was. It was very distinct, and I've never heard it before in a game here. It, had a, it sounded like it came from the opposite side of the field. I think there's a Citadel bell on this side. Well, Citadel, they got a cannon, right? I'd like to go shoot that thing. I heard it a lot when they scored 66 points today. My ears are still blasted from it. Were you here for the game? I was. They looked pretty sharp today. Carson Arnold, of course, playing for them. Shane Mahoney is one of the team managers. As the Wade Hampton kicker puts it up and into the hands of, I think, number 13, Will Virgilio and Will across the 35. He can really run it across the 40, 45. Finally, two Wade Hampton guys come and hit him from either direction and made a sandwich out of him. But Will Virgilio, our backup quarterback and kick returner, gives us some great field position with just under a minute to go here in the half. So, Swish, what do you do? You got a minute? You just let her you got, run out? You or? got Jace Krafchick, you got Cole Strickler, you've got Bryce Bennett. It looks take, like we have one timeout as well, right? Take a shot deep. Maybe you connect, maybe you get the P.I., but give ourselves a chance to get down there because we've got playmakers that can make it happen. Well, we got Tucker Swisher in the backfield with the quarterback, Edward Reidenbach. Three wide outs over on the right side. Edward rolls that way, wants to throw it downfield, has it. Cole Strickler across the 40, all the way up to the 44-yard line. Cole Strickler, I think that's his first grab of the day. Second target. Second, you're right, because I remember now calling his name earlier. First and 10, we're moving fast. 39 seconds to go. Edward wants to heave it into the end zone. Has a man! Touchdown! He's going to give it on the one. Oh, they said he was down in the one-yard line, and again, that was Cole Strickler on that catch. The wide out all the way over there on the right side, and Edward Reinbach knew what he was going to do the whole way there. Watch Jace Krafchick over here on the left now, or maybe Tuck Swisher will take the handoff. No, Edward keeps it. Flag down as Edward Reidenbach goes into the end zone, but you worry this one might come back. Come on, this guys. has to be on defense, right? 23 seconds on the clock here in the first half. 
Sharks trying to strike quickly with a 49-yard drive after a great run back by Will of Virgilio. Touchdown. Yeah, defense, and Edward yeah. says it's a touchdown. May have 12 on the field, too. And he is a credible source. Yeah, I'm counting 12. You said offsides. Okay. Well, I still count 12. So they're going to say it's not a touchdown. It is a t I don't know. Are they giving us a touchdown? The scoreboard hasn't changed. Touchdown. How's that no, not a touchdown? It's, it's a first and goal. I guess it was a dead ball foul. That would have to be. <laughs> Devin yard in. Devin ran it in last yeah, time. Yeah, well, now they're going to confer. Think, yeah, I think this, we think it's a touchdown. There's confusion everywhere on the field in the press box. If it's not a touchdown on the one yard line, you. It's put not Ed, a touchdown. You, you put Edward under center and you jam it in. Well, is Edward out there? That's Devin Yard. That's Devin Yard, and he That's is going to keep it, and he just walks right on in over on that left side behind number 54 and number 68, 78, rather. And that's Ben Britton and Monroe Freeland. Monroe... Of course, can play both ways, and he is formidable on the defense. He might be wearing a different number tonight. 73. Yeah, he's wearing 73, but he's kind of recognizable. We're trying for two here and not going to make it. So 36-13, your score, 20 seconds to go in the half, and we're going to take five. And we're back here as we're going to kick it off to Wade Hampton. Oceanside firmly in control of this game, although Wade Hampton's offense did kick in on their last two drives, and they scored touchdowns both times. If they had been able to do that in the first quarter of the game, we might have a different situation on our hands, but the Sharks were just really dominant in that first quarter, scoring 22 points. Now we're going to kick it off, and it's a mystery every time. This one, we're going to go deep on it. And the receiver has it at the two. Number three crosses the 10. He gets up to the 15. and Balls he, out. He falls out. It. Balls on the ground. I think Hampton got it. Flag goes down now. The referee didn't like something after the play. Well, it's been getting a little chippy here in this last series. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a lot of chipping and jawing going on down on the field. Well, they're going to say Wade Hampton recovered it after that ball hit the dirt. Unsportsmanlike conduct on us. 11 seconds to go, so in deep in their territory, you figure Wade Hampton is going to play it conservatively here. Although they do benefit from a nice penalty up to their 30-yard line. Thank you all for joining us here on this Saturday night, normally reserved for college football, but as much as I love college football, there's nothing better than this. Robert Brunson here with you along with Chris Swisher, Scott Krafchick, our producer, and Tyler Krafchick, our camera guy. As the quarterback throws it over to a receiver, he's going to do the old hook and ladder on the left side. Number three has it all the way up to the 37, and there's still a clock left, a minute, I'm sorry, a second left on the clock, and that was Nigel Solomon who took the throwback from the initial receiver on that play. And Wade Hampton not content to go into the locker room, trying to put some more points on the board, and they were not too far away from it there as number one, or rather number three, Nigel Solomon, has some speed. 
Four wideouts now. They're looking like they might try again as they move one of the receivers from the left to the right side. The quarterback, Terry, just has to throw it away to save his life because Timmy Castine was breathing down his neck. So that's going to bring the first half to an end here at Johnson Haygood. And, Chris, let's have a few thoughts on the first half, and then we'll take a little break. Yeah, I just love seeing the Sharks get out quick, aggressive, and fast early. That's You know, the you think about our, our last five opponents haven't been teams with <coughs> – that have been, excuse me, that have, uh, that are, I don't, I'm trying to find the right words here to say they, the, not have been as tough as opponents. What I like about this is that Wade Hampton is a good squad. They're well coached, they're organized, and we're playing well against a team like that. I love the fact that Coach Chad Wilkes throughout the week has said, listen, this is the playoffs. It's, it's one and done or go home. I'll tell you, one of the, one of the stories, the cautionary tales is saying that, his old high school, Shara, a number four seed, beat Mary in the number one seed. So I don't care what rank of team you're playing here. You want to show up, you want to execute, and you want to you want to put points on the board early. As our state championship baseball team walks out onto the football field and is appropriately applauded, one of those guys is Dylan Baker. Number 11, who's injured and out for a while, but he plays football as well as baseball. It's a motley-looking crew out there. Motley indeed, but they're not going to be paying any tuition in college. So we're going to just take a break here for halftime, and we will be back with the second half of football from Johnson Hay Good shortly.
Welcome back to the Citadel's football field that the Oceanside Land Sharks have become kind of comfortable with as our home field. And the halftime break is coming to a close with Oceanside leading Wade Hampton 36 to 13. And Swish, we looked pretty dominant in that first quarter. And then the second quarter, Wade Hampton showed a little life, but they were down 22 0 by that point. And we've shown the ability to score on every drive, if I'm thinking correctly. <clears throat> yeah, and I tell you, that, uh, that little tunnel screen that went for a touchdown there with a minute left in the half, what do we do? We get a great run back by Virgilio up to about the 45. Pass play connect to Cole Strickler down to, uh, and, you know, we, we responded pretty quickly is what I'm trying to get to. And uh, it's almost kind of like a... Kind of got poked in the eye a little bit and got a little, yeah, we, a little angry. We got a little confusion down here. The teams were all pointed in the wrong direction. Keystone cop action out here. But uh, fortunately, I guess somebody caught it. It doesn't really make much difference to me. If I was Wade Hampton here, I'm, this would be an onside kick for me. Well, we don't have. We only have three guys right up there on the line. Five, four all together within ten yards of. It doesn't matter. It's a deep kickoff. And Zach Hagedon Break has it. it. Crosses the 20, the Break 25, it. the 30. Break Zach it. has room coming on the left side. They're chasing him. They're going to finally drag Zach Hagedon down, but not until he gets to the 43-yard line of the Red Devils. Hagedon who? Hagedon. <laughs> and we are glad to have the whole extended Hagedon family listening in. We're going to miss all of y'all next year, but most especially number three. He's really had an opportunity due to adverse circumstances of uh, Vaughn Blue being out with an injury to show that he can really perform on the offensive side of the ball as well as on the defense. As the Sharks come out and take the first snap, Blitz from the left side, and Edwards going to go down. He sacked all the way back at the 45. Edward held that one too long. He was looking for, I'm not sure, Bryce Bennett or Cole Strickler, but somebody over there on the right side, and he was unable to release it. And he's coming off the field now. And uh, Will Virgilio, I believe, is going in under center. No, he's going to not be under center, but that is Virgilio, and he's more of a running quarterback. He takes the snap, and he's going to go around the right side. Will crosses the 45. They sling him down at the 44. That'll bring up third down and about 11 yards to go as Edward comes back onto the field now. Tell you that first play, I can't tell if those guys just picked Lucky. Being Wade Hampton on the on the on the um, blitz or the rush like that, but boy, they had it they had it pegged out. A couple of times they've come in from that left end position. Come on, guys. We're gonna go with three wide over here on the right side. Nobody on the left. Edward with Zach Hagenon in the backfield. It's a tunnel screen completed. Jace. That's Jace Kraftchick. Jace Kraftchick is gonna score. Touchdown! Number 12, who comes through every time he has an opportunity. Put six on the board here for the Land Sharks. Kid is automatic. He was untouched, Swish. They had a good blocking scheme set up. In the middle of the field. Man, there was one Wade Hampton player that was just on his back right when he caught it, but hit the burners, and he gone. Well, that was quick. 10-18 to go now, and our quarterback is going to keep it and jump into the end zone. That was Devin Yard. All right, thank you. That was Devin Yard on the carry. And we'll just take five seconds with your score here, 44-13.
I tell you what I like about that play call in there, Robert. You know, we were going to be aggressive, throw the ball in the first down, got smoked on that blitz, came back with the run with a different package. But then we went back knowing that they were bringing heat, called the, the tunnel screen, and Edward beautifully executed to Jace, and he was off to the races. And I love the play calling there. It was fantastic. Yeah, same here. Really taking advantage of that really aggressive Wade Hampton defense, bringing people, taking some risks, and we just made them pay. As we get ready to kick it off again, Great this, boot. This one's going to go into the end zone. That's the first one of the game for the Land Sharks. Who was doing the kicking there? I couldn't tell. That was tell. Nate Sturm. All right, so Nate, he can put that ball all over the place, the soccer player. So our team is coming out on the field, our offensive unit, taking a little rest. Well, these are the most points the Wade Hampton team has had scored on it. Barnwell put 41 on them. Uh, earlier in the year, we're now at 44, and we are not done yet. All right, so big question here for us. Defense, let's see what we come out with. And uh, is 22 back out? I want to make sure he's out and healthy on the field. He is. Number 22, Dobson, moves from the left to the right side of the quarterback. Terry, he gives it to Dobson. He's hit hard right at the line of scrimmage. He got about a yard on that carry, but he paid for it. I like him as a runner. I think Trey Brown, the linebacker. <laughs> He's shaking his head right now, 22. Our defensive line out there includes, of course, number 50, Timmy Castein, number 54, Ben Britton, and number 70, the 14-year-old phenom, Mike Jones, who's playing both offense and defense. For this Land Shark team, he's going to pay dividends for a long time for us. I see C.J. Moscos is out there at the right corner spot as the quarterback throws it that way. And they're going to pick up a first down. That receiver crosses midfield, slung down at about the 40-yard line. But Wade Hanton moving the ball on us yet again here. I tell you, those short screens... They are well-constructed, well-executed, and they do move the ball. Jake Rook was the safety, and he made the save on that tackle. I didn't catch who the receiver was over there on the left side of their line. Right now, they're going with two wingbacks and two wide receivers and quarterback under center. That's kind of a new formation for them. It's going to be a handoff to Dobson coming from the right wing spot around the left side, but he can't get back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Looking to see who was, was over that there. That was Jace. Yeah, Jace Craft, Jake, Jake Rook, Nate Sturm all over there. It was a new look for those who, uh, that offense, but, man, Jace, Jace had a good track on that ball carrier. Jace coming all the way over from the left side where he's playing linebacker. Quarterback fakes the handoff this time, throws a swing pass over to the right side. It's complete. Touchdown. Wow. Wade Hampton. Too easy. It looked like the same play they did on the Opposite side last time, again, for big, big yardage here. And that's number 82. He's hurt us before in this game. Elijah Gordon has probably the same guy that caught that other one, Swish. I don't remember. But this is the most points we have given up in a game. In a while. I'm checking right now. Yeah, I've, I'm not sure we've given up this many since that one loss we had to South Florence, but I could be blocking something out. The extra point kick is good, so Wade Hampton's going to have 20 to our 44, and we're going to take five seconds. So we're going to get a... Sorry, I better put the mic up. We're going to get a, <laughs> another opportunity here on five... Uh, on an opportunity here on offense, sorry, 8-11 to go, third quarter. 
So, yeah. Robert, we've given up 20 to Gray, 29 to South Florence in our only loss, 24 to Carolina Forest, and then not a whole lot since. So, 20... Nine. 29. The most we've given up all season, which is something to be proud of, frankly. But Wade Hampton has definitely had some success with I think they found pass over in the flats. Yeah, they found a little wrinkle that works for them, and I can probably guarantee we're going to make some adjustments here. It was their ability, though, I think, to run the ball earlier as they do an onside kick here, and they might have it. It bounced out of bounds after it hit our player. We were unable to haul it in. A penalty flag goes down on the sideline over there. So we're going to have to sort this out. Yeah, the penalty was just the ball going out of bounds. I thought it bounced off of our players. The reason I'm a little confused by that flag. I think if we if it hit us before it went out, that wouldn't be a penalty. Yeah, that's probably why they're discussing. But either way, we'd take the ball right there. I don't think we would have them re-kick. No, we'd take that yardage. Yeah, you're right. Now they're picking up. up the flag. Yeah, and that's, Your eyes are getting better. <laughs> they are actually getting better. As we are going to have it, first and ten on our own 48-yard line. Let's see what our offense has in store this time. Last time, I hope nobody took a bathroom break because we would have scored before you could get back. It was quick. Edward Reinbach is back out there now. He's going to go with Cole Strickler way out to the right side. Bryce Bennett over there as well. Jace Kraft check out wide to the left, but it's a handoff to number 22. Swish is down to the 45-yard line, and he picked up seven yards on that carry. And, Robert, his new nickname is Deuce Deuce. All right, we'll call him Deuce Deuce if that's what you say. Four wide outs this time, and Deuce Deuce takes the handoff, and he's going to get in there and pick up a first down down to the 41-yard line. He's got a lot of names. He's Tuck, he's Tucker, he's Swish, he's Swisher, and apparently now... He's deuce, deuce. And he's going to take this one again. And Tucker, running tough inside, picks up four yards. As we continue to wear down that Wade Hampton defense, and they've got a player down now. I think he was up against Monroe. Yeah, I don't think he won that battle. No. no I think that was that's one of their captains. Holding his knee, it looks like. Hate seeing that. Yep. Hopefully he'll be okay. You know, we've had some injuries this season on our ball club, but really not as decimated as, uh, as we have at some times in the past. I don't think we've lost anybody for the whole season. No, we haven't. Unlike, uh, fortunately, what you dealt with with Dana last year. And a couple got Will Gauze went yep. out. That was that one hurt. Um, you know, we've relatively been pretty clean, though, um, for the most part. Here's our stat guy, Bill, <laughs> cheering us from New Jersey or New York. I'm not sure where he went to. <laughs> I wish everybody could see that video. We've got folks listening in from everywhere. I wanted to make sure that Wiley McCall and her family, I guess, Robert, won at your birthday. When you win a volleyball state championship, what do you do? You pack up the whole family, you go to Disney World, and you party and hang out. And love that they're watching the old land sharks on a Saturday night in Disney, but, man, maybe there might be something else happening down there, some fireworks, some, some partying going on. Happy birthday, Wiley, is a gift. I'm not going to sing happy birthday to you. But I hope you have a great trip down there, and congratulations on that big volleyball win. We Wiley. Have, I was going to say, we have another international viewer. Rhett Reidenbach is in uh, Bahamas. Rhett Reidenbach, trying hard for the Father of the Year award, is <laughs> off fishing while his boy's playing in the playoffs. <laughs> Couldn't let that go. Second down and six yards as Edward is out there. He cut his arm earlier in the game, but 
He looks like he's okay now as he slings it over to Bryce Bennett, and Bryce has the first down. Oh, oh my gosh. That should be a flag. That should be a flag. There we and go. Yeah, there it is. He was really thrown hard, and Bryce is not a big, heavy guy. He's a silent killer. But he is trotting back on the field like nothing happened, so we're glad to see that. And that's going to be a first down for the Sharks on the 27-yard line of Wade Hampton. So now we've got the Virgilio Zach Hagedon package in. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Ball's going to be placed on the mark. Marching it off. Yeah, I said the, where the first down was going to be, but that was before the penalty stacked on. And we're down to the 14-yard line. I like it when Will Virgilio is out there. He's really fun to watch. He's a good runner. He's fast and elusive. Shifty. And he's got Zach with him leading the block. Will doesn't get past the defensive line there, though. He picked up two, falling forward as he was tackled. What year is Will? I should know Will, that. Will is a sophomore. Wow. I did not know that. That's great news for the future of this football team. As Trey Brown comes trotting off, limping, and I don't like that. It doesn't look like he was hurt bad, but he definitely was dinged up as he comes off the field. And I think Max Mormon is going to be in there to take his place. Zach's still in it, running back. We got three wideouts as Edward takes it, gives it to Zach. No, it was a fake. Edward, not, not Edward, sorry. 13, Will Virgilio into the end zone. Touchdown, Landshark. Little dirty action there on number 23 on the tackle. Don't like that, but I'll take the six points instead. What do you think? I'll take it, Swish, and we have not punted the football tonight. Nope. We have scored on every, we've scored a touchdown on every offensive possession. This might, I'm going to check now the other way, how many points we've scored. What's the biggest output? Um, we had 55 against Magnet, but eh. 42 against Lake Marion. 48 against Gray. 40, our offense, I'm sorry, go ahead. 41 against Lee Central. Those are our big outputs. So it looks like, I think Edward back out there now at quarterback. As no. he takes, no, it's, it's not. It's Devin Yard. He looks a lot like Edward, and he's tackled. We don't get that two-pointer. I tell you what, that that their left side, our right side, man, they're really bringing heat on that side of the defense. We're going to take five seconds, and we'll be right back. And we're here at Johnson Haygood. Swish, if we win this game, in all likelihood, we're going to get Woodland, right? We Woodland won, so should we be fortunate enough to win this game, we will be back here at Johnson Haygood Stadium here, downtown Charleston, next Friday night, playing the Woodland Woodlands. Some other scores. Barn will defeat at Andrews, 36-22, so they advance. Andrew Jackson... Knocked off Timberland, so Timberland's out. And Woodland beat Shiraw 48 to seven as our kickoff goes deep to number three. He gets up to the 20 and then he's brought down as if he hit a stone wall. And number three, of course, is Nigel Solomon, who's had a lot of good plays tonight for this Wade Hampton football team. Couple shout outs. The Big Ragu is listening in from Indianapolis tonight. John Pace and his beautiful wife, bride, Amy, and their nephew and niece up in New York City. Looking at our defensive alignment, I think we've called everybody out on our defense tonight. The starters are close to it, are all out there as Wade Hampton's quarterback keeps it, and Timmy Castine demonstrates to him that he still has plenty of energy as he throws him down for about a yard loss. Maybe, maybe less than a yard, but Let, it was a loss. Let's see if they go back to that bubble or the tunnel or the quick screens on the outside here. Little play action, see what they do. 
They try to clear out the flats and hit number 82 over there, Elijah Gordon, but I suspect we're going to have our eyes on that guy as the quarterback takes it, and sure enough, he wants to throw it over there. We hit the receiver early. That was, I think, Jake Rook. But, I mean, he barely hit him. But he was early, and the intended receiver was Nigel Solomon. Yeah, that was not going to go for anything. Yeah, there was really no need. Mm -mm. But, nonetheless... We will take a penalty here and give Wade Hampton a first down after the referees march the ball 15 yards downfield. The new line of scrimmage will be the 40, I'm sorry, the 35 of Wade Hampton. They trot up to the line of scrimmage. Our defensive players are getting in their alignment as the quarterback. Drops and throws it over to that left side, and he's tackled before he can go anywhere. The slot receiver just sort of turned around there. But he had no blockers, and there were a bunch of black uniforms around him. Well, they like that. They like those plays, Robert. It's paid good dividends for them, and they're going back to it. But it looks like we might have made a few adjustments here in covering them up. So You better do something to clear out our players, because if we're there, we're going to tackle you. So it's second down, 12 yards, just under five minutes to go. Wade Hampton, quarterback, keeps this one after faking the handoff, and he picks up two, maybe three yards, and now they're facing third down, and he didn't even get as much as I thought. It's third down and 11. Haven't heard that music in a bit. I like it. The old collegiate Jaws music. Swish, I was thinking a little while ago, I've seen Wade Hampton play before. Yeah. I went to high school and we were in the same <laughs> conference, but it's been about 50 years. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, they actually have a hard helmets now. <laughs> Let's actually 40 years. They haven't been 50, but a little trickeration. They're going to do a reverse that's a, that's to a number hold. three. And he got close to a first down. Out of bounds short. By about three yards, that's going to make it fourth down now for Wade Hampton, and let's say three, maybe four yards to go for the first. I'd like to roll that one back. Carson Lee was getting pent up pretty hard by three guys over there. You could see it unfolding from up here so easily, but down there I know it's hard to pick that up. They're going to go for it. Yep, they're going for it. The red britches. With their quarterback, Chris Terry, and number 22, Dobson, in there. And we're crowding up to the line of scrimmage, daring them to run that ball. Trying to get us a jump. And that's a timeout, I think, Wade Hampton. And that's probably the better part of Valor in that situation. Try to get us a jump, and you know, we said not going to do it. We talked in the introduction about how Hampton County has become world famous now, but not for a good reason. The Murdoch situation there, where a local lawyer and a family of generations of lawyers who've been very prominent in that county and very successful. You can't be crazy enough to make up a story the way that that thing's playing out. That's really, it's some crazy stuff. And, you know, I haven't really followed it all that much, as much as people I talk to. But, I mean, everywhere I go around the country, people ask me about it, and they want to talk about it. It's bananas. Alec Murdoch has fallen hard. Big play here, Robert. So Wade Hampton drops up to the line. It's a fourth down and three and a half to go. Direct snap to Dobson, number 22. He has the first and still running. Trey Brown has got a hold of him and riding him like that circus pony. <laughs> and it's enough for a first down as Wade Hampton has it on our 46-yard line. Well, Robert, they're moving the ball, but they're also chewing a lot of clock right now. 
Yeah, Wade Hampton doesn't have an offense. It doesn't seem that's built for the two-minute drill like we do. Frankly, we move the ball quickly. At any rate, Chris Terry, their quarterback, is going to drop, wants to roll, has a man over on the right side. He caught it but dropped it. They're going to say it was incomplete to number three, Nigel Solomon. Nigel could have caught that one in all likelihood, but he may have realized if he caught it, he was going to lose two yards, and if he dropped it, he wouldn't because the defense was right there waiting on him. So it's second down, 10, 3.33 on the clock here in the third quarter. Something eerie about those numbers, a lot of threes. Maybe Zach's going to get an interception. Chris Terry rolls out to his right side, has guys downfield, then he's hit and knocked out of bounds, clean hit by number 12, Jace Kraftchick. And he hits him right around the line of scrimmage. So now it'll be third down and 10 for Wade Hampton. And they're blood red colors. You know, lots of, lots of teams have the devil as their mascot. I've always wondered why. It's not very nice. I huh. mean, what makes you sit down and think I'm gonna be a choose devil. the most evil thing on the planet or in the universe mm. to be my mascot? I don't know. I like the lizards a lot better <laughs> as Terry Takes the snap, hands it off to number 22. He slips a little bit as he gets to the corner. He picked up five or six, but still going to be well short of the first down. So now Wade Hampton's looking at a fourth down and about four or five. In all likelihood, not with a real opportunity to win this game. And you wonder, do you go for it here or punt it away? They're gonna, you got to go for it here, my book. And that looks like what's going to happen. But I guess the Wade Hampton Angels somehow doesn't seem right. As Chris Terry takes this snap, fakes the handoff, wants to throw it a little swing pass again over on the right side, a horse collar. In comes the flag. That's going to tack on 15 more yards as number, I think, 82 is on the reception there yet again, Elijah Gordon. And I didn't see exactly what route he ran to wind up in the right flat over there. He's their tight end, and he's been their best weapon tonight. No question he was horse collared. And Jake Rook is uh, injured and off the field now, so let's see who we bring in to replace. We're all walking back towards our own end zone Man, with that, our heads hung. That play design has killed us tonight. Like big, big down, big down killers. I guess, you know, I didn't see where 82 was lined up, but in all likelihood it was in the tight end spot right up next to the right tackle. Come sneaking out. Drifted out of there. I'm like, looking to see where that guy is on this play. <laughs> And the whistle blows. I think somebody got a timeout. Indeed, Wade Hampton does. And they want to put some points on the board, Swish. Yeah, well, they're, uh, they're not going to win if they don't. It's pretty Boy, that's down. maybe the, the most insightful comment you've ever made. Well, they're <laughs> down 30, and the, the clock is ticking. You've got 2.14 left. and It might be second only to my comment. They want to put points on the board. <laughs> <laughs> well... I tell you, they just continue to chew, chew points. I would probably look for another onside kick. They've got to do either trick plays or try to do something to, to score quickly and then keep the ball out of our hands because it's running out, running out of clock. Oceanside Land Sharks, they're... Former quarterback Sam Hartman, now one of the top quarterbacks in all of college football, is playing tonight. Wake Forest is up against Chapel Hill. I haven't seen a score, but I certainly don't need to tell our audience that because they can probably get it easier than I can. I'd be curious to see time of possession in this game. Man, it feels like these guys have been on the field on offense quite a bit for long drives. Pistol formation. Hang on, I want to see that in a second. 
A pitch back to Dobson. He can't get to the edge, but then he cuts back a little bit, has some success, bounces off some tacklers. Give credit to number 22. He has really played well tonight, Zion Dobson. And now Wade Hampton has it second down at about four yards to go, and Wake Forest is up. I don't even want to tell you the score because people might switch over. It's 28-27 in the third quarter over Chapel Hill. Sam has no trouble throwing the football. Of course, he was a disciple of our former coach, Chad Greer, who's now coaching one of the best high school teams in the world up in Charlotte. As Chris Terry takes this snap, gives it to Dobson, he's pushing us back again, but then we stop him at about the six-yard line. So that'll be short of the first down in Hampton. Now looking at a third down and three. Certainly, Wade Hampton has gotten better as the game has gone along and more confident. And that's a good thing for the Sharks because, frankly, in all likelihood, we're up 30. We're going to win this game. But these games get tougher every week, and the more experience you have against these tough teams, the better, the better you get. As Terry drops it, falls down on his knee, and he's mad as a devil can get <laughs> on the 12-yard line. <laughs> I almost said See, like if it was an yeah. angel, like he's a mad – it doesn't work to be doesn't a mad angel. Work. He's, he's mad as – you know what I wanted to say. So it's now fourth down, six yards to go for Wade Hampton. They really want to put some more points on the board – but they might let this third quarter clock run down. No, they can't. They got to snap it before. There's 10 seconds to go in the quarter. They're going to throw the ball Three up Three seconds top. on the clock. He better snap it. He does. Throws it. It's batted down at the line of scrimmage. And that's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the quarter. I'm trying to see. It looks like Monroe Freeland. Is he out there? No, that's no, Ben Britton who slapped that one down, number 54. So we're going to switch into the field. We'll be back here in five seconds or so. And we're back. Oceanside, a team that has really demonstrated offensive perfection tonight, if you judge perfection by scoring every time you get the ball. Our punter, bored, very bored, has had no opportunities. <laughs> it's a good thing our punter is our quarterback. Well, Jake Rook also does some punting. We got people who can punt here for a team that really doesn't need it that much. All right, Robert, my key for the fourth quarter is I'm a big execution guy. Nothing changes. Go out and do your job. Get first downs. Chew the clock. It's always good to score points. We've scored a lot of them tonight. We've got a 30-point differential. Execute, stay healthy, and stick to the plan. And Monroe Freely, not only can he play football, but that dude has rhythm. Was he, he was dancing as he went back out on the field there and I'm impressed. And then he's going to be out there now, along with our offense. And Edward Reinbach back in at quarterback. Four wide outs. Faked handoff. He wants to go all the way. Oh, my goodness. Jace Kravchik was over there on the left side. He had a step on that defensive back in the – Throw wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't catchable. He's slightly underthrown, or he he had him he had him beat. I love the play call. You know, get him back. They think we're just going to milk the clock, grind the ground, run the ball. I really like the way Chad Wilkes coaches this team. Oof. I mean, it's fun. It's a fun team to watch. It's Wilkes ball. As Trey Brown moves from the left to the right side, Tucker takes the handoff. He's driving people back. Tucker Swisher, deuce, deuce, the swish, <laughs> picks up about six yards. And now we're looking at third down and about three. It's a really nice night here 
I'd say 70 degrees. As Edward tells Trey to move from the right to the left again, Tuck gets the handoff, Swisher on the left side, first down, Tucker all the way up to the 28-yard line, and that'll move the chains. Deuce, deuce. That sounds like the beginning of a rap song or hip-hop. Deuce, deuce. <laughs> if you keep doing that over and over and then somebody starts talking, that would be... We may have to get the hype season on that one. I'll yeah. just stop there. As Oceanside now up to the line of scrimmage, which is the 28. Edward out there, Tucker. Tuck Swisher, I tell you, he looks like an old school running back. As Edward throws it to the left side, complete to Jace. He has the first down, crosses the 40. Are they going to say he was right out of bounds at the 40-yard line? Boy, Monroe is having a good time with number 87 on, Will, that, uh, on that left side of the line over there. Our speed package is coming out there now, Swish, as Will Virgilio and Zach Hagedon. <laughs> hey, we haven't talked enough about our offensive line tonight, so maybe we can talk about them after this play here. That's absolutely true. As Will takes it, in all likelihood, going to run it. He does. On the left side after faking it to Zach, but they drag him down right around the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him two yards. Yeah, our, our O line has been spectacular tonight. You know, um, this Wade Hampton team, the defense, they're not huge and they're not big, but they're physical and they're fast. And I tell you, our O line has done a phenomenal job establishing the run game for us. Yeah, we're riding back now, back out there. He takes the snap. He wants to throw it. He's looking downfield. Now he's going to run it. Edward, keep going. You got the first, man. He crosses the 45 to 40. Edward finally runs out of bounds about the 36-and-a-half-yard line. And so many weapons for this Oceanside team. And, you know, Oceanside, well, we'll I'll get to my commentary in a little bit. Let's just stick with this. First and 10 now for the Sharks as Trey Brown dances around as the H back and Zach Hagedon takes the handoff. I lost him into a sea of red and white as the Red Devils brought him down. Boy, Fenn Johnson doing a good job being aggressive, driving his man downfield. This O-line is working deep into the fourth quarter here. I love it. Second and about three. Tuck is back out there. Deuce Deuce has it. First down all the way down to the 22-yard line. Deuce Deuce to the Deuce Deuce. <laughs> all right, now that could be a song. <laughs> He's going to be at the 21, but who cares about details? As we have a new first down there as Edward drops. Has a screen in the middle. Bryce. Bryce. That's Bennett, Cole. That's Cole. Down. No, it's Cole Strickler. I should have said that. That was me tricking you there. Another touchdown for the Land Sharks and Cole Strickler, the big, tall senior, adding to his impressive resume as a wide receiver. Flag. And a flag comes down after everything. So. We've got a legal man downfield. What is it? Well, it was way late, though, but, Scott, what happened? You knew it was going to happen. I think we scored a touchdown. Well, I think we did. I just saw it, but no, no touchdown? Legal shift. I'm understanding it's an illegal shift on Oceanside, so the touchdown is nullified for Cole. I know his dad, Craig, is frustrated by that. Looking for the name of the guilty party. Now we're going to have it first down at about 15. Tuck Swisher in there running back. Bunch left. Tuck takes the handoff, tries the left side, then thinks the middle looks better, then picks up seven, maybe eight yards. Clock at 8.18 and moving. They're going to say the line of scrimmage is at the 20, and we've got a second down and nine. One of these times, I like to see him just pop out of that mess 
and just scoot in. Max Warman, 23, coming out there to take over for Trey Brown. Glad to see Trey back in there, and he was still hop-skipping a little bit when he came off. It's going to be another handoff to Swish, but he loses a yard there as he is slung down, and a flag comes in late. And uh, that the, had all the markings of an unsportsmanlike kind of penalty there. It came from deep from the back, Judge. Bryce Bennett is, was in that territory, and I know one thing for sure. Bryce was not talking trash. He does look guilty, though. He did. He was, his walk was kind of the walk of shame a little bit, but we'll see. Robbie Bennett, of course, here at the Citadel, a great resource for the Land Sharks. Getting us here at the Citadel after they played a game earlier today. Is it me or the fourth quarters of our games always have controversy and takes a quorum? A quorum of striped jerseys out there taking a vote now. But it uh, looks like my feeling it's going to go against us because there's more of them facing in the direction of Hampton than there are facing in our direction, and that's usually a yeah. sign. That one of them wants to take that ball and walk it the wrong way or the right way. Dependent. Somebody's shadow boxing. Yeah, I think that's Cole. That's and, Cole. And Bennett. Or Bryce, sorry. All right, so it's going to be against Wade Hampton. And it's a fairly big one. But not enough for a first unless it's an automatic first. Let's see. They're going to say it's a second down, and if there is distance between that second down marker and the looks like line of gain, I can't tell what it is. It's like about a centimeter. <laughs> it's not a first down, though. It, they haven't flipped it over. So now we got a second down and a whiff of air. <laughs> and now they move them, and they say, nah, that's a first. And uh, it's not first and goal, though. We could still get another first down if we get it down to the two-yard line. Edward takes it. Tuck has it. Swisher's going to go in the end zone. Deuce, deuce, touchdown. Tuck Swisher, who if you look at him out there, he looks like somebody out of 1955 who maybe <laughs> played for Notre Dame. And he was that tough guy who always ran it right in the middle and you could always count on for positive yardage. And there he gets six more points. Tuck having great opportunities to play a running back after he got healthy just when unfortunately Vaughn Blue was injured mid-season. You know, they, don't have, they haven't called the touchdown. There's been a lot of discussion. I can't imagine what they're talking about. I didn't see any flags. Well, thank you, Scott. You've got a point there. We've got our extra point unit out there. I, I don't know what's going on. Well, there's Actually, a flag yeah, in the end zone. I do see a flag in the end zone now. This game's getting out of hand with the chippiness and the Well, they just spotted it at three, so it's going to be a touchdown. Personal foul on them. Sports them like a contact on us. Offsetting. Touchdown. Well, this is – these the referees, I would prefer them to get control of the game. I talked about it being chippy, Robert, when it was down on the opposite end of the field by the big scoreboard, and it's getting worse. Someone just texted me on that play against Bryce, number 23, punched Bryce. Ooh. So it's got to – we got to – People gotta from make sure. Hampton County, man, they don't play. Who's that devil? Rough one. crowd. The devil Devils, in them. Yeah. Generations of Brunsons from there. <laughs> As Edward gets down to hold this one for Quinn Mahoney. And it's up and it's in. Another point added on. It'll be 57 to 20 in favor of the Sharks. And we're going to catch our breath here for five seconds. Uh, 
All right, the Oceanside Land Shark fight song. If it has any words, I don't know any of them. But it's playing now. We got lots to celebrate. Almost 60 points. Our highest point total of the year, which is double nickels, 55. I guess that's really only because we went to the running clock in that academic magnet game. We might have scored one touchdown or two touchdowns in that second half, but you're right. Yeah, I think it was like 50 to nothing or close to it at halftime. That was, I don't know, whatever. Point is, because we don't have a running clock here with a 37-point differential, we have an opportunity to score more points than we other would. Because once you go to that running clock, I mean, it really goes, it goes fast. Short kick now. It's going to go out of bounds. That's not what we intended. Maybe after the season we can ask Coach Wilkes to. Nate Sturm doing the kick and honors for us. I think he wanted to get that one to one of the guys in the middle of the field for Wade Hampton. And Wade Hampton obviously outclassed, and I'm now I'm going to go on my soapbox, that the Sharks really should be a 3A or maybe even a 4A football team. Wade Hampton is from a small town where they can only recruit from within Hampton County. Not recruit, but that's where their student body comes from. Hey, I'd be, I'd be up for playing. Listen, we were 3A last year. I don't think we wanted to come back down. No. It wasn't our choice, and I wouldn't mind moving up a class. Yeah, absolutely, and that's my point. I, I mean, I'm not saying we're bad for being in 2A. We didn't, we didn't make that choice as the quarterback. Takes another snap. Chris Terry wants to throw it downfield to number one, but he's covered. Oh, my gosh, he caught it all the way to the end zone. Number one, Hezekiah Abram, who's had some big plays. He had one guy on him, and he was able to slip away, make that catch, and score six for Hampton. Well, he was the guy that he came in motion, and he came off the line of scrimmage screaming, Grayson Freeling trying to, to track with him, but he got behind him and... It wasn't far behind him, though. Credit the quarterback. That was a good throw. Well, we just talked about them not being able to score fast, and we did it again, Robert. <laughs> we do that so often. We curse the guys by saying the wrong dang thing. As Wade Hampton is now going to put another point on the board. Yes, sirree. And we'll take a five-second break and be right back. All right, we're back. We can stop speaking candidly. So what was the most sc point scored on us? You said 20. 29. Yeah, nice. Wade Hampton, you're right, Scott. That's a great point. They are very close to having They're the second most points scored on us all season. Hey, we got our hands team in, if that helps. Well, you know they're going to onside kick. They got 30 points together between now and seven and a half tw minutes from now. We're going to have two guys deep at the 23, but if Wade Hampton's ever practiced an onside kick, they're going to do it here. we got nine guys up there. And he drills it. That was not a good onside kick. Yeah, it could have been because our, for whatever reason, our receiver over there didn't just fall on it or pick it up. But at any rate, we will have it after Wade Hampton shocked the world with a, what was that, a, probably a 60-yard touchdown pass. Took about seven or eight seconds. And they do, you know, I know I keep, lavishing compliments on Wade Hampton because they're from my part of the world, but they, they're a well-coached team, too. You know, this chippiness notwithstanding, you can tell teams that are well-coached and those that aren't. We're going to have a new quarterback, Devin Yard, senior. Devin, the transfer, hands this one to Tuck. He's hitting the backfield, and Swisher 
is going to be pushed down, lose a couple. He, he had no chance. He was hit as soon as the ball was handed to him. Yeah, well, fortunately not to drop that one. I can hear Coach Rivens. He's not happy with whoever. So I think we've got a we've got a bit of a new offensive line in. Yeah, I'm thinking we got some some new players in there. We're feeling pretty good. Just under seven minutes to go. Devin, the quarterback, claps, takes it, wants to throw, but now he's going to oh. probably run or throw. He throws. He has the receiver. Ethan Number Baldwin. 15. Baldwin has it. 40, 35, 30, 25, pushed out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Scan the field. Nothing yellow in the grass. We're all good. What a great play. Stepped up in the pocket, ejected out to the right. I thought he was going to get a little long with his windup on the throw, Robert. But boy, oh boy, did he hit a nice strike to Ethan. And give credit, Ethan, I don't think I've seen Ethan Baldwin run that fast before. <laughs> and Devin, I mean, honestly, I didn't know if he was going to throw it or run it or throw it or run it. I'm not sure he did until he saw number 15 down there. And Ethan had plenty of room to run. He's going to stay out there on the left side, one wide out to the right. We've got an H back and a handoff to Tuck Swisher. Tucker rumbling down inside the five-yard line. Has another first down for the Land Sharks. I think Tucker's over 200 yards probably. Tucker has really gotten a lot of yards tonight. And, again, he ain't going to break off a 90-yarder, but he's always going to – be reliable to pick up positive yards as he gets right back to the line on this one. And I cursed him, jinxed him. A little bit of a high snap kind of threw off the, the mesh on the handoff. but That'll make it second down. Line of scrimmage, I can't tell. It looks like about the three-yard line. Let some clock run down here. you got a 25 seconds on the play clock. Let it burn down. Let your dudes catch your breath. And... Uh, Make sure we got the right play call here, which is run the daggone ball. This is the point in the game where some of the players not as familiar, perhaps, as Devin Yard, the quarterback, takes the snap, gives it to Tucker. He got into the end zone. Tuck Swisher with a blue-collar touchdown, pushing guys back and working for every one of those six points. boy Swish. He's averaging close to 100 yards, something in the 90-yard range since he took over as the starting running back here the last four or five games. How many has it been? Five Five. Games. This is number six since coming back off the, uh, the leg break and the MCL issue. And just coming back from those serious injuries before the season started, is a positive, but that Tucker's been able to come in and do all this for us is just more than we could say grace over as Quinn Mahoney puts it through the uprights. The score is 63 to 27, and we're going to take five. All right, not only did Big Swish star on that last play, Little Swish, Tanner, snuck his way onto the field. He was the holder for that PAT. I like seeing that. It was good. He got rolled on a little bit, too. I like toughening that kid up. Who is he, Uno Seis? Yeah, I don't know his number on the varsity Uno's, team. Uh, what is it? And especially not 17. in Spanish. 17, you're trying to trick me, Scotty. <laughs> Sorry. I was hoping it was lower. Tanner's number 13. Oh, it's the starting quarterback on our he's JV been, team. He's been 13 since he was in the maternity ward, so it's yeah. weird to see another number on him. As we kick this one off again, Wade Hampton has it on their 10-yard line, and the receiver is brought down by one leg. Great tackle by Ethan Baldwin. And I said the score was 63-27. It's actually 64-27, and that's definitely our highest point total this season. And we're going to take a five-second break. Yeah, I was going off your score. Stand by.
Wade Hampton coming back up now, trailing us by a lot. 37 points, I think. When you get in the 60s, you're really challenging my math skills as their quarterback, Chris Terry, goes down. I got to tell you, Robert, like before this game, I was super nervous about this. These teams are, are they're scary. Now, listen, they've put as many points on the board as South Florence put on us. The difference is we just have executed beautifully tonight on every phase of the game for the most part, right? And that we got out quick, and that big 20, we have 22 points at, at the end of the first quarter, I think. Yeah. That was the big difference, and it just set the tone for the rest of the game. You're right. Our jumping out in that first quarter really did make a difference for us. As Wade Hampton tries to get a playoff, but the whistles blow. I'm trying to look at the history, and the last time we scored above 64, so stand by. It's been a while. I don't remember scoring in this range in quite a while. I can remember scoring 70 points at Philip Simmons. That's what got us in trouble. Oh, yeah. That was a nice Philip Ooh. Simmons score. That's not good. Actually, uh, <laughs> <laughs> two years ago, North Charleston, we were 67 to 0. All right, so there's a break on the field. I'm not sure. Somebody must have called a timeout. Well, it looks like. Wade Hampton's out of timeouts, so that would have been theirs. Oceanside has three that we don't need to take. I still see our, our number ones in. Cole Strickler in on defense now. Carson Lee, Johnny Gunn. Love that kid. Kale Gilchrist, AJZ. Kyle Baldwin, KB21 is out. Nate Sturm. So we've got a good chunk of our starters in, but we've got other capable guys that are next man up, stepping up and playing good ball for us. Four. A lot of depth on this team, Swish. Yeah, a lot. Second down, 15 yards to go for Wade Hampton. Their quarterback, Chris Terry, is going to go down at the two-yard line, and the tackler is doing push-ups in the end zone, and that is Cole Strickler. Cold, number eight, mostly a wide receiver, can play defensive end as he demonstrated right there. And he can also do push-ups as he also showed us. Four-minute mark in this game. 64 to 27. We're going to be at home next week against Woodland. We Back are here indeed. At the Citadel. You got it. All right. Home good. sweet home. Good to know. That'll be our last home game for our seniors as well. A little delay of game. Then I guess we'd play the Friday after Thanksgiving, would be the week after that, assuming we win next week. Yep. And that is the night when we lost to Barnwell. Might be a nice rematch. Three years ago. Yep. Not much doing there for Wade Hampton. Yeah, that was Dana's sophomore season for Barnwell. You'd think I would remember that detail. I gotcha. Tell you what I remember from that one is uh, we did the live feed of that game up in the bleachers, which is where we'll be again, no doubt, if the game's there and we're there. I looked down at the other end of the bleachers, and there's the Broadcast going on from the Big Dog radio station, WDOG in Allendale, <laughs> as the Wade Hampton punter puts this one up, and it's a fair catch at the 48-yard line. And there's a flag. At any rate, that turned out to be Carl Gooding and Rick Gooding. And Carl Gooding owns that radio station, and he hired me to work there when I was in high school and was 16 years old. <laughs> So it's kind of fun to have a little reunion. Is that where it all started, Robert? The big dog, man. That's where I got my start in life. You may have a new nickname now. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first <laughs> time. <laughs> big dog, I like it. Big dog Brunson. It's catchy. Gavin Gaspar on that fair catch got love tapped by whoever. Uh-oh. There's another Swisher side in at quarterback. New boy. Tucker is wearing 17, it looks like. I'm going to say it in English only because I'm not bilingual like Kraft Chick. So Tucker 
I'm not sure that who the running back is to his right, but he takes the handoff. He's going to go around the left side. Is that Grayson? Yeah, it's actually Tanner in the backfield with Grayson Freeling. I think that might be his first carry as a running back this year. I think it is. I'm remembering another running back who really looked good in one of these games earlier. Cale Gilchrist? No, although Cale has done well, too. A.J. Johnson? Nope. Dylan Baker? Nope. I think it was Trey number 20. Brown? Parker Stubbs? That might be it. Anyway, Tucker has it second and five with three wide outs. Grayson Freeland moving from the right to the left. He takes the handoff. That's got to be a face mask. Flags flying in there. Just hope he's okay. That was, that was bad. That's going to be a 15-yarder. We might put more than 70 on this scoreboard here if we want to. All year long, man, I've been asking for Tanner, it's Tanner, not Tucker, but Tanner to pull the ball on one, and he's got these long, skinny legs, but they're quick. Wouldn't mind trying to see him take one up the gut. Yeah, I'm a little uh, indifferent if we want to score here or not. I like the, uh, I think the most we ever scored was Philip Simmons at 70. I hate to beat that record. We need to put that in the rearview mirror. And now we've got Gavin Welch coming in at quarterback. So Chad Wilkes did a good job giving all of his cues and other players a lot of love. And Dion is definitely uh, listening and watching. Yep, Dion missing you tonight. I'm doing your huddle job. So. Not as good as you, though. Better not be bone fishing in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> as Gavin takes it, hands it off. Ooh. No, he didn't. Why are we not kneeling? I'm not sure what happened, but we, we got tackled. <laughs> so I think now he, we lost the football. Yep. So that was a, a bad exchange. We fumbled, and the Red Devils have the ball now, with a minute 50 to go in this game. We've got Steve Rudnicki, our PA guy, asking why we're not taking knees. So. And I'm just glad Swish is watching because I missed that. It's okay. So it'll got, be first got, and ten. Go ahead. I got you, big dog. <laughs> God. Why did I ever say any of that? Because it's a 64-27 game. Wade Hampton. Fumbles it. We pick That's it tuck. up. Tuck Swisher has a touchdown. Deuce, deuce. So I guess that's what you get. I'm going to give Tucker uh, MVP of the game. How many touchdowns is that, Swish? This, and then there's Vaughn. Trace, Trace. Vaughn Blue, first guy out there to congratulate Tucker. Yeah, yeah I got to tell you, Tuck, Tuck, um, Tuck feels horribly for Vaughn. And we talk a lot about it. He is the first guy that wants Vaughn back more than anybody. He said whenever he has a good run, a bad run, Vaughn is always there, not to congratulate him, but to throw his arm around and say, hey, maybe try this next time. Great job. He's just been a great consummate teammate, although being injured. And, you know, he's had a he's had a great, great career here. But I tell you, I'm more appreciative of how Vaughn's handling his, his injury time right now. Shows a lot of character. All right, we just uh, hit a record, 71 points for Oceanside. 71 on the board here against a Wade Hampton team that's better than that, frankly. We're going to take five seconds. So we're back here, and, you know, Barnwell played Wade Hampton during the season and beat him, but it was not by this kind of score. It was like 41-14-ish. Ish, yes, right, in that range. Those two teams play each other every year for decades. They were playing each other when I was in high school. As we kick this one off, and the receiver bobbled it, they're going to make it a touchback. You know, I, I'm, uh, I like winning, and I like winning big. But, man, when you get to these kind of differentials, I feel terribly for the other side of the, of the field, you know, because it wasn't so long ago when Oceanside started its program, we were on that opposite side, right? And so 
in a short few period of years, we've turned the thing around. But, man, these are, these are tough losses, especially for the seniors on that other side of the field. Swish, what was the score in the first game we played against Wade Hampton? It was 0-63, to 63, not us. That was a long time ago. 20, when Oceanside was... 2016. In its infancy, people had to go out to McClellanville to go to school. They're running back. Number 17 in there. Picks up a few yards. They're just... Kind of waiting for the clock to run out, but let me Already give Jordan that. Rivers credit on that carry. He's got it again. Coming around the left side, he's tackled. Main thing here is you really don't want anybody to get hurt here. And that was Tuck Swisher on that tackle. The tackle was from Deuce Deuce. That should be the end of the ball game. And uh, the Red Devils from Hampton Wade Hampton High School are going down. Oceanside wins the second round of the playoff game here at Johnson Haygood Stadium. And Tucker Swisher really put on a show at running back tonight. I mean, just, I, we don't have our Bill Sandvig stats here tonight. I wish we did, because Tucker's got Tucker's to be over 150, maybe 200 yards. I'm going to give him 220 two yards. <laughs> I see what you did there. Scott Kraftchick making up numbers, which I've been known to do. Edward Rodenbach had a solid game at quarterback. Zach Hagenon I think a Edward really big plays. I think Edward might have left the field to get that gash on his arm taken care of. It looked pretty gnarly on the picture that I saw. He did, and the other quarterbacks weren't slouches either. Devin Yard and Will Virgilio both coming in, and that's setting aside the younger guys who just did some cleanup time there at the end. Our defense, though, Swish, giving up 27 points here tonight is not a point of pride. No, no, it's uh, still good enough to get the, the, the big win tonight, but I can tell you, Salazzo and J-Mac will be ripping through film tonight and tomorrow. I know the coaches will be in the uh, – in the film room late tonight and, and all day tomorrow. I'm going to probably put some home team wings in their bellies for after the big win. Yep. So thank you for joining us here tonight. We'll be back next Friday night, barring a hurricane or an earthquake. Robert Brunson along with Chris Swisher, Scott Kraftchick, and our ace cameraman, Tyler Kraftchick. Have a great weekend.